some of our biggest games of the week now that we're talking about in the biggest game of the week that you and I will actually be in attendance for for this game is number three Texas at number 10 Michigan, which is at noon Eastern time on Fox. This is probably the biggest non-conference game of the entire season. It seems early to say that, but when you look at it, it's really right now the only non-conference game between two top 10 teams that we have on the entire college football schedule. So uh, this has massive, massive playoff implications. And yeah, it's still early in the season, but you got to think the loser of this game could have a lot of difficulty getting into the 12-team college football playoff because they have many games after this against difficult opponents. You know, Texas has to host Georgia and play Oklahoma among some other SEC opponents. Michigan has to host uh, Oregon and USC and then travels to Ohio State at the end of the year as well. So this is the biggest non-conference game of the year and the winner of this game is set up very nicely for the rest of the season but the loser of this game really doesn't have too much wiggle room uh, in order to make the 12-team field. Yeah, I think what it is for both is you, you have that thing now with a 12-team playoff where you can afford a loss or two but it's also an opportunity where Oh, man, we could lose this game, right? And and you talk about Michigan especially and the way their offense looked last week, and we're going to get into that in a minute. They've All those tough games you just mentioned, right? If you at least have a win against Texas under your belt, you get some breathing room, right? Okay, if, if Oregon comes in and beats us or if we lose the Ohio State game this year or something like that, then you've got some room if you don't win the conference. And the same goes for Texas. I, I mean, it's neither one of us picked them to make the, the SEC title game. They very well could, despite yeah. us not picking it. Obviously, there's six or seven really good teams at the top of the SEC. But it gives you breathing room if you win. It gives you a, a signature win if you win, right, to get that at one of those seven or eight at-large spots, it's a huge it's a huge game. I, I agree. I think it's the biggest non-conference game of the season. I, I want to make sure, because I know some people listening to this might think, oh, is he saying the loser of this game is automatically out? No, absolutely not. The loser of this game is still absolutely still in the uh, conversation for this, but the loser of this game, like I said before, just not as much wiggle room after, after, after that, especially with all the teams that got left on their schedules. So Dawn, you had the Michigan offense in this game, which kind of looked a little shaky in the season opener against Fresno State, so what is the matchup that we should be looking at when the Wolverines uh, have the ball? So it's really, for me, about Michigan's passing game. They're going to find a way to manufacture things in the run game. They're going to find enough rushing yards every week. You, they bring in Alex Orgy as a Wildcat quarterback when they take Davis Warren out of the game. Davis Warren, a naturally better passer, although he kind of struggled um, on Saturday against Fresno State. But the big matchup, I think, for any team that plays Michigan, you sit there and you go, how do we cover Colston Loveland? And, and I mean, the, the realistic answer is you, you can't because he is the best tight end in the country eight catches for 87 yards on Saturday against Fresno State with a touchdown the rest of the team had eight catches for 34 yards he he, he single-handedly carried their passing game lined up out wide or in the slot on almost half of his snaps the other 27 at tight end obviously he's just he's the best tight end in the country for a reason right and he's a matchup nightmare I, I think he's you and I both think he could very well be a first round pick at the position this coming draft He's, he's the matchup problem. And, and when Fresno State, when he lined up out wide, they tried to put guys one-on-one -on, -one on him. It just was not happening. So when you look at Michigan's passing game, right now it's completely centered around him. And, and the problem with that is for as good as Loveland is, how, can he carry that against big-time teams like this, right? When you talk about now Davis Warren on Saturday on throws of 10 yards or more, air yards, one for five for 10 yards and an interception. And the only completion was exactly a 10 yard out to Colston Loveland. So they have issues right now getting vertical. Now, if I look at Texas last year, we talk about, well, there was times where Texas's secondary struggled, right? But they struggled with, with the deep ball, right? They struggled with vertical passes. We saw it in the, in the semifinal game against Washington. Under 10 yards last year, a 93.4 coverage grade for Texas. That was 24th best in the country. On throws over 10 air yards, they had a 27.9 coverage grade. That was in the bottom 15 of the country. So wow. if you can't get vertical on Texas, they're a lot more comfortable playing back, coming up, and making tackles and just keeping things in front of them. And right now, look, I know it's against Fresno State. It's one game. It's a new quarterback. Davis Warren's trying to work his way, filling big, big shoes with J.J. McCarthy. Yeah. You've got receivers filling big shoes with Roman Wilson and Cornelius Johnson leaving. 
Can Michigan get vertical with somebody else, or does their passing game only run through Colston Loveland? It's the biggest problem I think they have right now. I think they're going to be able to run the ball with some success, and Loveland is a freak of nature. He moves different than any other tight end, but they need Warren, and they need these wide receivers to step up to win vertically down the field. They definitely do. I don't know if you watched all of Colston Loveland's tape, but I actually had a buddy of my, my buddy of mine, Max Toscano, on Twitter send me a couple of clips of his run blocking. It, it was better. He was it pancaking some guys it out does. there. It looks better. They, they were running behind him, too. No, he was the best player yeah. on the field and it wasn't close yeah he, he's phenomenal he is the best tight end in college football so my matchup to watch when texas has the ball is all right can quinn Ewers do it again can he deliver once again in a hostile environment against an elite defense look quinn Ewers is not a perfect quarterback by any means but when the lights are brightest this guy shows up dude he does. He, in his second career start ever against Alabama in 2022 as a redshirt freshman, he had a 90.2 grade and three big-time throws in the first quarter of that game, Dalton, before going out with that injury to his shoulder. And then the following year, he was fully healthy, had a 90.6 passing grade against Alabama with three big-time throws and no turnover-worthy plays in the Longhorns' upset victory over Alabama in Tuscaloosa, by the way. And granted, Alabama, as you see on that graphic, they had a top 10 highest graded defense in both 2022 and 2023. With guys like Will Anderson Jr. that one year, Dallas Turner was there, Kool-Aid McKinstry was there, Terrion Arnold was there, Caleb Downs was there last year as well. They had superstars on that defense, and Quinn Ewers still shredded them. So yes, there are some games, like the Wyoming game last year, where he doesn't look great. You're like, okay, how do you look great against Wyoming? But then against Alabama, you really show up. Well, listen, Michigan has an elite defense as well, and they have some of the best players in the country. In fact, the top two prospects on PFF's 2025 NFL Draft Big Board, which you can find right now at pff.com, made uh, by the great Trevor Sycama, top two prospects are Michigan defenders and Mason Graham, the D-tackle, and Will Johnson, the cornerback. And Dalton, you look at my preseason rankings for position-wise, there are six Wolverine defenders that were in the top 10 of their respective positions. Now, one of them, Rod Moore, is still recovering from the tornado CL, so he won't be playing in this game. But that's still five guys, man, that you really have to uh, take a, uh, take account for. They really have maybe the most loaded defense in college football. But Quinn Harris has done it before against Alabama. Can he do it again in the big house on the road like he did last year against Alabama? That's what I'm really looking forward to. Because I think if you look at all the other matchups in this game, it's a really, really fun game. The offensive line for Texas is one of the best in the country. The D-line for Michigan one of the best in the country. I think Texas has some really, really good receivers. Michigan obviously has an unbelievable secondary. Everything is, is an awesome matchup. So that's why I think it really comes down to can number three – be the superstar that he was against Alabama. And if he is, then Texas is winning this game, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. And look, I think what you have, first of all, you have a great coaching matchup too. Yes. Steve Sarkeesian yes. against Wink Martindale. I don't think this is a better coaching matchup that we're that we're going to see all season. But the theme in those Alabama games, too, for Quinn is getting over the top, right? Throwing those deep balls. I do wonder if not having Rod Moore, if, if this is the game where it hurts them, right? Because it, you know at some point Sar Sarkeesian's going to want to take a shot, right? He's going to want to take the top off. They're not afraid of anybody. Quinn Ewers has shown he's not afraid of, of anybody. So I, I'm curious to see those weapons, right? Matthew Golden and Isaiah Bond and those weapons. Can they get vertical and can they hurt Michigan's safeties without Rod Moore in there? Absolutely. So Dolan. In this game that we'll be attending, the biggest game of the weekend, one of the biggest games of the entire season, arguably arguably the biggest non-conference game of the entire season, who wins? Does Texas pull it out, or does Michigan get a massive home victory? I, I, watching Michigan's passing game, and I think this is some of the concern that we had in the preseason, I think their defense is absolutely good enough to win this game. I think their running game is good enough to win this game. I think they can manufacture enough. Uh, Kalel Mullings looked really, really good last week, ran really physically. But I, I worry about the lack of balance for Michigan. And if Colston Loveland is the only option for them in the passing game and, and Davis Warren and Alex Orgy can't figure it out at, at on their end, I think Texas finds just enough points in this game. They have so much talent. Steve Sarkeesian is such a good play caller. I have Texas 24-16. to 16. I think as long as Texas doesn't turn the ball over, then – they're gonna they're gonna find enough points to win this ball game, right? And Michigan they scored 30 points the other night, and 14 of them were a direct result of turnovers, and they only had one drive that went for over 50 yards. I think Michigan it's so methodical right now, and if Texas makes a few big plays and doesn't turn the ball over, I like the Longhorns. 
I almost have the exact same prediction as you. I have Texas winning 24 to 17. I have Michigan scoring one more point than you do in this game. I, I agree with you. I, I think Michigan is going to continue to struggle to find its identity offensively. And I think Edwards will do just enough. I don't think he'll go absolutely nuclear like he did against Alabama, I think. But he'll do just enough in this game for the Longhorns to pull out the victory and uh, and continue right now, which has been a really good start to the season. They killed Colorado State. And if they get this win, a top 10 victory on the road over Michigan, a lot of people are going to talking about them as legit national title contenders if they weren't already honestly so both of us have texas winning this game and also if you're in the ann arbor area and you're a, a viewer or, or listener to the show hit us up we'd love to like meet you guys there if you guys are going in as well so make sure you guys are uh, hit us up for that we cannot wait for that uh that trip to ann arbor that's gonna be a lot of fun